Hi, I'm Mike Simpson. Welcome to this presentation on customizing queries in business objects. If you have questions regarding any of the content covered during this presentation, please use the question and comment box that's located below. All right, let's get started. We have several topics that we're going to be covering during this presentation. Queries are our mechanism for getting information out of the business objects universe and being able to transform it into useful information in the form of reports. So we're going to talk first about the properties associated with the business objects query. Then we're going to talk about a mechanism for editing a business objects query. We're going to talk about how we use a quick filter to be able to quickly filter out the information that we want to have in the business objects query. We're going to show you how to look at the SQL that's generated as a part of the query. We're going to show you how we can add information to an existing business objects query. We're going to talk about how we set up single table queries. And then you'll have an exercise where we'll show you how to customize queries. First, let's take a look at query properties. We can access the properties of a query from within the data manager to be able to create a customized individual query. Making changes to a query property overrides the values that are set in the query's defaults. The properties of a query fall into several categories. We can modify the name, we can modify the universe, we can modify the limits associated with a query, we can modify the data retrieved from a query, we may modify the security values associated with the query, we may modify the prompt order of a query, and finally we may modify the content associated with a query. If we're going to modify the universe associated with a query, then we can click on the ellipsis button to change the universe that's associated with the query. Most of the time, once a query has been designed, you usually don't change the universe unless you designed the query in a production environment and you're now moving that query from a production environment, I'm sorry, from a testing environment to a production environment that has the same tables and things like that. So unless you're moving from test to production, you probably don't want to change the universe. Now as far as the limits go, you might adjust the limits to adjust the number of rows that are retrieved from the query or adjust the length of the time that a query can run. Again, you may lower these values to a number that's smaller than was originally set up by the database designer, but you can't raise these values to numbers greater than that originally set up by the database designer. Now as far as the data itself, then you can modify any non-aggregated SQL that's there. Now aggregated SQL is group by SQL, SQL that has a sum function associated with it, a min function, a max function, or a count function. All of this is known as aggregated SQL because it takes multiple rows of data and applies this function or squeezes it down to get a single value out of it. So it aggregates these multiple rows into a single row. So in the data property, we can modify non-aggregated SQL. In other words, SQL that doesn't fall into one of these categories. In the security element, we could modify the user's rights to access a particular folder or to access a particular report. We also could access the user's ability to modify a query. So if we don't want to give the users the ability to change a query, we could turn that on or turn that off here. And if we want to have a user be able or not able to access a particular folder or particular report, we can change that there as well. If a query is supposed to have a series of interactive prompts, then the prompt order allows us to change which prompt should appear first. For example, if we should be prompting for department number first and then employee name or vice versa. The context property of a query allows us to specify the context, that is the join path, associated with a particular query. Now, by default, when a query is set up, the context or contexts associated with the query are always reset when the query is refreshed. So if you're trying to set up 
a default context for a query, then the reset contexts on refresh checkbox needs to be turned off, needs to be cleared. Because otherwise, each time you run the query, it's going to reset the contexts and your customized join path is going to go away. Now, in a similar vein, there is an option there to force a shared document to be refreshed for each user. So you may want to have a document set up in such a way that each time a user opens it, we want to basically to have a document go back to the database, reload the data, and then refresh the view. For example, there may be some information that should be looked at where it's queried by a particular user or should be refreshed each time. So to force a shared document to be refreshed each time the user goes and fetches it, right-click on the Report tab, select the Document Properties from the Report tab, and then check Refresh on Open under Document Properties. That way, each time the document gets opened, then part of opening it requires to go back to the database and re-query and refresh the output. So basically, you're guaranteeing, so to speak, that the document's never going to be stale when it's looked at. The Edit Query button in the Query panel allows us to modify an existing query. Now, once that is modified, then we can drag an object from the left side to the upper right side and allows us, allows us to insert a new result column. And as always, we can drag query filters, those little funnel column values, from the left side to the lower right side to be able to filter the results. We can also edit or modify a list of values to allow our users to select from only a particular subset of values. This is commonly known as a pick list. Now to edit such a pick list, we can select universes from the tools menu and pick our universe if necessary. Then select list of values and then we can find the object associated with our list of values and click on edit. Modify the query and then click run. Now it's also possible to modify an appropriate list of values um, if the query says in list and then have a list of values there you can also modify that list at that point. So there's another, there are a couple of ways to edit queries that have lists of values. The most common way to do that is to bring up this quick filter as shown here and I'll briefly run through this. We have a graphic here that's used in the fashion database and here in the fashion database you can see that we are looking at accessories that are showed in the different uh, fashions and we have states listed down here in the column California, Colorado, DC, Florida, Illinois, Massachusetts, New York, and Texas. Right clicking on the state column in the report brings up a context menu and the context menu we've selected quick filter. So if we want to limit the data that are viewed on the report, for instance, let's say that we just want to filter, say, and just look at the Massachusetts entry, we could limit the data viewed on the report by right-clicking on the report, as shown here, to bring up the context menu, selecting quick filter, which is what you can see selected there, and that will bring up the, and or, in the query panel, we can click on the quick filter, which is the funnel icon, funnel icon there, with the object to be filtered, the state selected. So either way, we'll bring up the quick filter. So once we bring up the quick filter, then we could say, well, I just want to filter, say, just for the state, and I could just select state equal Massachusetts, and that'll rerun just with that particular state. So that generates a quick filter. And then we could select the values to be filtered. You can see here's the quick filter window showing up and we can select the values. In this case, we've selected California, Colorado, and Texas, and we move those values to the right side by either double-clicking them or clicking on the Move button, which is the double-headed right arrow there. And then we click OK to create the filter. And so when we do that, then we filter just for those three values. So rather than writing a whole explicit filter there, what we've done is we've just set up an on-the-fly filter to just do an on-the-fly 
filtering for those three values. That's why it's called a quick filter. Now, if we look at, the, there's a button on our query panel toolbar that basically says SQL on it, and if you click on that button, it's an SQL question mark button. That's the view SQL button. If you click on that button, it allows you to see the actual SQL that is generated, because if we're going to do all this drag and drop stuff, you might be actually interested in seeing what SQL is actually being generated by business objects to be passed back to the database. A, you might be curious as to what it's doing, and B, you might want to modify or customize that. You may want to fine tune it. So once you've clicked on that question mark button, you can view and optionally modify the SQL, and then you can click on the run button. Clicking on the add query button allows you to add a new independent query. Clicking on the add a combined query button allows you to add what's known as a combined query. A combined query is a query that uses the union, intersect, or minus keywords because those keywords take two different select statements and combines the results. So with the union statement, you have select something, union select something else. Same with an intersect, same with a minus. So since what we're doing is we're combining the results of two different select statements, we call that type of a query a combined query. And then finally, we can click on the add a subquery button, and clicking on that button allows you to set one query equal to another query. So you could say select something where x equal to, and then open paren, select something else. That's adding a subquery. It's also fairly simple to create just single table queries. If you drag an entire class, and usually a class in business objects represents just a full table, dragging an entire class from the left-hand side of the query panel to the right-hand side generates a single table query. That brings us to the end of our particular presentation here. And in this presentation, you've seen several mechanisms available to you to help customize our queries. You've seen how to look at the various properties associated with a query. You've seen the various mechanisms available to edit the queries, double-clicking on them using quick filters and things like that. You've seen mechanisms available to add queries and some of the different types of queries you can add, such as combined queries, subqueries, quick filters, things like that and you've seen the mechanisms available to you to view the SQL that's generated when you run a query. Now you'll have an exercise where we'll go about customizing queries. As part of your exercise, you'll modify the properties of an existing query. You'll edit some of the behavior in an existing query. You'll add a query to an existing query. You'll view the results in SQL. And then finally, you'll go ahead and you'll run some queries. If you have questions regarding any of the content that's covered during this presentation, please use the question and comment box that's located below. Thank you again for viewing this presentation.